All right, hello guys. In this very, very exciting video, we're going to be talking about the winter of 2019 to 2020 some more. We're going to be looking at some updated seasonal models as well as some analogs and let you guys know how those are going and just give you guys an overview of what's expected to happen to this point. This is not an updated winter forecast. My previous one was my final one, but this is going to give you guys a lot of juicy information uh, if you're curious about what's going to happen this winter. Now, before I get started with this one, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this with your friends and family on social medias if you do think they will enjoy the video. Now, let's get right into things. Now, we're looking at our Jams Tech model, our updated ja Jams Tech model. And this is the Japanese, uh, basically their weather service has a model. The NOAA has weather models as well that they use, but this is the Japanese uh, government's weather model and it tends to do pretty good sometimes so we are going to take a look at this one as well as the cfs model which is the more american model so we're going to take a look at both but here's the jams tech and you can see that they are calling for cold in the east warm out west and i would say this correlates quite nicely with my winter forecast i do think that they're keeping things a little bit warm there for maine it looks like and then the dakotas i do not think that'll be the case whatsoever and but the biggest thing is they are showing cold in the east, warm in the west, and that overall seems to be the biggest characteristic here. <clears throat> now we're about to get into our super exciting CFS model update, and we're even going to be able to go month by month on this one, which is super duper exciting, and things look very, very cold on this model. All right, so you can see on our first frame, we're looking at December, and you're probably thinking, well, that's not so cold. Well, it's not. And in previous winters, I'm pretty sure, you know, most of the winters in the past 15 years, for the most part, have had very warm Decembers, followed by, well, sometimes warm Januarys and Februarys. But most of the time, if there is cold months, it's not December. It's usually January, February, or one or the other. So we can see there is a bit of cold near the Great Lakes and through New England, as well as up there in Montana. But besides that, a little bit warm there for the southeast, south central, and western United States. So very warm overall. But it is cold up there in Canada, which is a big time important factor because that's going to help with our snowpack and really building the deepening cold up there in Canada, which is where all of our cold temperatures come from. But as we move towards January, things start to take a big, big turn as we see very, very cold temperatures enter the eastern United States, New England, the Great Lakes regions. These are all in the greens, which is four to eight degrees below average on a monthly average, which is 30 days. So to be that far below average on a monthly forecast is what we consider extremely or maybe not extremely, but far below average um, as far as temperatures are concerned. And as we move towards February, it gets even colder as we see those greens become more widespread throughout the mid-Atlantic, New England. Uh, some areas in the Midwest and some of those central regions of the United States as well. All of these greens, again, are far below average. And even the blues, you'll be far below average at times, just a little less consistent. All right, so we're about to look at all three months combined on the CFS model, which is going to be very exciting to see what the combination of all three of those months would show for the entire winter season. As you can see, we have dark blues and greens for some of the Great Lakes and New England states. So overall, for the winter forecast on the CFS, they are thinking that these areas are going to be where the heart of the cold is from Montana through the Great Lakes and through New England. This doesn't completely agree with my forecast, but it isn't very far off either. Uh, it would say that the northern eastern United States and north central United States as well are the heart of the cold. And then as you go further south in the east, it becomes a little less cold but still colder than normal. All right, now let's look at that 500 geopotential height, the 500 millibar geopotential height, that is. And this is important because in a previous Winter Thoughts video, we did talk about that NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. And what we're really looking for is those yellow colors up there in northern Canada and near Greenland. And sure enough, for the December, January, February combined forecast here, we have very yellow and orange temperatures up there and then you can see the deep blues down there in the eastern United States. And you can tell by looking at all of those isobars there that we do see a trough in the east as you see those dip down in the eastern United States and they ridge up in the western United States. And this is an extremely good look for the winter of 2019 to 2020 and very exciting to see as a weather enthusiast. This would lead to, 
towards a lot of East Coast snowstorms and potentially a ton of cold in the eastern United States. With that blocking up there in Canada and Greenland, that is very, very good sign for negative AO and negative NAO as well on this model. And that would explain why it's calling for cold temperatures throughout all those months as well. All right, so we're going to get into a little bit of analogs now, which is very, very exciting because this is where we're able to look at past winners that really, really match up with this winner. And I'm going to go month by month on those as well and just tell you guys why I think that these months are going to be the top analogs. All right, so we can see here, this is December 2014. Now, 2014... November of 2014 matches up almost perfectly with how this November has been so far. I posted that on my Twitter and I think I put it in a video a couple days ago as well, but the November time of 2014 looks almost identical to this November. And 2014 to 2015 was already one of my top analogs based just on sea surface temperatures. So that one already is now my number one analog for sure. Now, as we look towards December, it doesn't look cold anywhere in the United States. Now, this is also what the CFS model was kind of alluding to as well. So it's very interesting to see these, the analogs and that model agree on things. But as we head towards January, just like on the CFS model, January of 2015, which obviously would be after December and November of 2014, we see the cold start to enter some of the South Central United States and the Northeastern United States, including the Great Lakes, which is almost identical to what the CFS is trying to allude to. And then by February of 2015, you can see we had far below average temperatures from the Dakotas all the way eastward through especially the Northeastern United States, where you can see it's green and even those deeper blues, which is going to be 7 to 11 degrees below average on a monthly average, which is just extremely far below average for a whole month. For a whole 28 days, it would be on f in February. So very, very cool to see these two, the CFS and also the um, month of February line up almost perfectly. All right. Now we're going to take a look at December of 2013 because this is going to be my second best analog here. The t winter of 2013 to 2014, which was also a very cold winter. And it was right before 2014 to 2015, obviously. Sea surface temperatures like to linger around, and I think that's why these two line up really good with this winter together, and why you wouldn't find much differences in the sea surface temperatures. And they were kind of similar winters as well. December, well, it was kind of cold. That's the only difference. We had a little bit of warmth there in the southeast, but besides that, it was very cold December. So that's the only difference between what the CFS is showing and 2013, obviously. And November didn't line up as good with the November of 2013. It lined up moderately good, though. Now, by January of 2014, we had some of those greens moving into the Great Lakes, some of the mid-Atlantic states, and some of those deep south states as well, indicating 3 to 7 degrees below average on a whole month. So, again, that's pretty far below average, and usually that would be a very, very cold month if we saw that happen. By February, we saw a deeper cold, but it was really pulled back away from the East Coast more. It was more located, as you can see, in the Midwest and down through some of the central states, as well as the Great Lakes in Pennsylvania and some of those northeastern states. But really, the coast was spared from most of the cold, which is one of the biggest differences from the winter of 2014 to 2015 and the winter of 2013 to 2014. Uh, and there was another analog that was one of my top ones, and I want to show you guys why this isn't one of my top ones as of right now. Here was the November of 20, 2009, sorry. Of 2009, this was November, and clearly this does not line up with how this November has gone whatsoever. And this already wasn't one of my top analogs. Uh, it was kind of one of my bottom ones. I saw some resemblances, but it definitely wasn't one of my top ones. And I know a lot of you in the Mid-Atlantic really wanted this to be the top analog. And this winter is 2009 to 2010 all over again. Everybody always says that every year. And it did see I did see some similarities with this one. But definitely now looking back at how this November has gone and how now that November had gone. Also, just the differences with I think there was more of an El Nino that year. And we definitely do not have that this year. There's just some key differences that are enough to make this one of my bottom analogs, if even that, maybe even, you know, not even included in my analog package. So 
2013 to 2014, and then 2014 to 2015 are my two top analogs, but 2014 to 2015 is definitely a lot closer, and then 2009 to 2010 is like a distant analog that I'm hardly taking into consideration, but there is some similarities. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you guys are really, really excited for this winter time this year. Uh, we're getting really close. We're already starting to see snow, and we're only about 10 days away from December, which is super exciting to think about for us winter lovers. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.